another episode of the Rebel Radio Podcast, and this is Mark. This is Matt. As always, our names never change. No. Because that would be weird. Just our underwear. Yes, so hopefully. <laughs> you know. And um, welcome to everyone to the show, and welcome to people listening on Ironic Radio, WBLZmedia.com. We are on there every Wednesday from 2 to 4 p.m. Central time which is three to five for you eastern folks yes and um we always have our new episode the first hour and a classic episode in the second hour and we thank you all for listening to that make sure you go follow those guys on twitter and check out wblzmedia.com and check out the other great shows on ironic radio i'm very proud to be on that and uh, it's been it's been fun so far but has it been real I think it's real. It's real. I think yeah. it feels real. It I listened real. to it. I turned in to our own show because I'm self-serving like that, and and it was real. Yeah, so. I, I I check in as much as I can now that I'm like, you know, I, I have to, you know, basically retrain with someone. It's like my Wednesday schedules are crazy. Yeah. But yeah, yeah, go. It's uh, you know, there's a good mix of shows on there. Yeah, it's a lot of sports stuff, uh, just kind of talk show stuff. Uh, I think there's a show about like relationships and yeah. There's ours and our friends at the Critical Thinking Podcast. Miguel and those guys are on there, too. Um, so a lot of good shows on there. So check out WBLZmedia.com. <laughs> I feel like Howard Stern. Like, WWB, you know. WWB. And, and, and remember when the, <laughs> the, the, his boss tells him in the movie, like, you have to say it with some. So then he makes fun of it. They get mad at him. You know, it's like WBLZmedia.com. Yes. And uh, Body Parts. Was it Body or? The, was that the name of his movie? Private Parts. Private Parts. Yeah. yeah, yeah, Private Parts. Yeah, all I remember is the girl and the speaker. That's yes. That's really all I ever took out of that movie. He's like, <laughs> making the de- the bass voice. Oh, it's ridiculous. So how, so your week's been, you, you started a new position at your job. So yeah. I'm sure that's um, not that thrilling. But. Not that thrilling. Uh, I had some change of off days, which I, I kind of liked my days off during the week. You know, I had two days off. Uh, during the hey, week, you only work on four weekends. days a week. You have to work yeah. five now. God forbid. Yeah, I know, right? You're, you're a real person now. I have to actually do stuff now. Really, it's like before. I only had to do stuff if people didn't show up, but now I have to do stuff all the time. Regard. I, I have no sympathy for you. I know, yeah, but I do yeah. have weekends and holidays off, so that's nice. So and you have a three day weekend. Yeah, I have a three day weekend this week, and uh, and and I don't get any phone calls on the weekend. None. My supervisor's like, yeah, uh, I just let my phone die. And and going into the weekend, she's like, if anyone needs me, they have my personal number. And I'm like, All right. wow, you're pretty like cool. <laughs> <laughs> that's that's good. Um, I have to work Monday, but that's okay. It's extra money. I don't care. Yeah. Um, hey, it. I would wor- I would work it if it was extra money. Yeah. I'm, I'll hustle it. And like Labor Day, what is it anyway? I mean, it's nothing. It's like yeah. it's like the beginning of the fall holiday. No one cares about mm-hmm. really. You know, kids are back in school. It's like whatever. You know, it's there. It's something to give us a holiday in between. Fourth of July and and Thanksgiving. Well, don't don't sell Halloween short. That's you know? true. Not that I took know. the whole week off of Halloween. I'm, I, I'm yeah. taking vacation that week too. Taking that? Yeah. Oh yeah. Because man, I'm hoping our Astros in the World Series again. Oh, that would be awesome. You know, so that's why I'm taking that week off. But um, anyway, so that's about. I haven't really had anything exciting this week. I haven't done start a new job or anything. I'm still in the same fucking shitty job and <laughs> i don't know if you my co-workers listen to the show i'm sure some of them do but they understand where i'm coming from yes. sometimes sometimes that place just makes you want to rip all your fucking hair out and just into uh, see now it's got me cussing that place gets me cussing you, know? if you rip it's it like, out and turn it into a toupee you could turn it over for profit yeah you my my boss is bald maybe i could put on his head you could yeah. <laughs> and mix some of your pubic hairs in there <laughs> like, uh, like jackass style yes hey man i made you a beard <laughs> Oh, oh man well are we ready to get into it i think we're ready i Let, think we're ready uh, as we always we start the show with download this where we tell you what we've streamed watched downloaded lately to our phones our video game systems or whatever so matt what have you watched this week download checked out in your spare time which probably wasn't much this week with yeah kids back i know your oldest went back to school too and your your, your new having to work job sorry yeah um this week i was lucky to have uh monday off because i was coming off of a, of a va- another vacation and uh a man with like 20 weeks off yeah freaking 20 weeks of vacation and i i decided that i was gonna start flipping channels just seeing what was on and the wrestler was on and uh, i had never really seen the wrestler i knew that Marissa Tomei would, you know, got nude in it, so I looked up just that one part, <laughs> and that's it. But I, I decided to actually watch it this time. It's funny; I've never watched it. Um, Aronofsky is an interesting director. Like, I his movies aren't for everyone, right? But like, yet his one movie, The Fountain with Hugh Jackman, is one of my favorite movies I've ever watched. 
but like I hated Black Swan. Mm-hmm. Not a huge fan of Pie, but so how is the rest of it? I've heard it's I've heard it's more accessible that I might like it. Yeah, yeah, you you definitely would. I mean, it's his name's uh, uh, Randy the Ram, and he's this kind of like a local wrestler, but he was really big in the eighties, and you know he uh, he left you know aban- basically abandoned his daughter at that time, and he has a heart attack, and he's told that you know hey you can't wrestle anymore, and he's older, you know it's like in his fifties, but he's still going out there and doing it, and. He, he decides that, you know, maybe he needs to take some time off and he's going to try and get to know his daughter. But, you know, his daughter feels like she abandoned him or he abandoned her and he doesn't want anything to do with it. And he befriends the stripper, Marissa Tomei, and she is smoking hot in that movie. I mean, she's what I think she was like 42 or 43 in, whenever she made that film. Yeah. And you can hardly tell. But, you know, he kind of falls for her, but she doesn't she doesn't mess with customers. Right. And so um, he does really good. And he kind of he gets back into his his daughter's life, and then things start falling apart again. And uh, you know he decides that you know he's gonna he's gonna go party it up, um, and, and he does some like cocaine, and he bangs this young girl that rem- remembers uh, a poster on her brother's wall of him, and he's, she's like, "Let's party!" And he, she makes him snort cocaine, and then he bangs her in the bathroom. <laughs> it's friggin' hilarious. And, uh, just, but, uh, it's, you know, he lets down his daughter and he's like, you know what? I'm going to go out. I'm going to go out like, you know, how I want. And, uh, he's going to wrestle and he wrestles at the end. And, uh, he, he, it's, it's pretty cool. Um, he has to get a job at, at, at the deli counter at one point. And it's just, it kind of, if you've ever worked retail, yeah. it kind of gives you a sense of, man, I know how this guy's feeling. Cause he kind of gets frustrated with his job. I, I've heard Rourke is very good in it. Too, yeah. So, Rourke yeah. is I really think good. He might've been Oscar. I may remember right. I don't know. I'd have to I go think back so. And look, but yeah. yeah. It could be, it could be a show worthy movie. Yeah. 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 Maybe. Yeah. You know, we'll see. We'll it's see. It's kind of weird. Aronofsky movies are really weird. Like, I think... It looked... It I was think filmed if I like was a to, documentary almost. I think if I was to cover one of his movies for the show, I think The Fountain's the most accessible. Yeah. Because it's kind of sci-fi-ish fantasy. Yeah. You know? But yeah. Um, Pi is really weird. Yeah, Pi and is weird. Black Swan was just like, what? You know? Yeah. <laughs> the, um, except for that scene where, you know, the oh, girls yeah. are... Yeah, that was... Right. Mm. Now important. Yeah. Um, <laughs> Uh, that's all you watched really this week uh, in your extra time? That's all I really watched. Yeah. I mean, I worked a lot this week. so uh, Oh, God forbid. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, uh, pl- I, if, you know, friends who don't know, and if you like sports, I do work uh, for the Texans. I work for the McNairs. So I was at the Dallas game this Thursday. And, uh, and then this uh, Saturday, I was working the uh, Texas Tech and uh, Ole Miss game, which unfortunately Texas Tech got beat. Um, U of H won. Longhorns lost. Yeah, I'm not talking thought, about the Longhorns. I thought I thought they were going to come back, but yeah, no, you know, I'm not. I'm college not college football is alive, and yeah, yeah. Uh, we'll see how the season plays out. Yeah, um, I, I mean, I didn't watch much this week either with work and uh, school starting, so I'm not getting home till a bit later. And yeah. Michael's got football two days a week, but uh, I did last night. Sat and watched um, Alien Covenant finally. Oh yeah, I had it seen this which is weird for me to not have gone and seen an alien movie and i was in half price books and they had it for three bucks on clearance i'm like you know what for three bucks fuck i heard i didn't hear great things about it um but I'll, for three dollars i'll give it a chance and uh so i sat down last night and watched it and it's 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 weird because it's almost hard to believe that this is ridley scott directing this because it's definitely weirdly paced mm-hmm. prometheus was very much like aliens very slow paced but yet it had this genius build to it to see what was going to happen now we all know the payoff in Prometheus wasn't what we wanted, right. but overall, I really liked the movie up until the end of it, and mm-hmm. and this was felt more like it felt a bit like a rush product. Like it's weird, it's not edited as well. The scenes are quick. Um, it takes a bit to get going, and you saw it. You said right, yeah. And um, then the execution of ideas. I know there's been a lot of now. I have no. I'm not stuck on the alien universe. Like I have no way to say whether i agree with what they do or not i'm not that attached to the universe but i guess hardcore alien fans didn't like the changes made in this like the face huggers and i we're out of spoiler free zone on this everyone's it's yeah. been out a while and the and the face huggers implant quicker and then they jump off the face next thing you know the chest is bursting out and people say they change that and how quickly the alien grows especially the one that's planted on the ship at the end of the movie mm-hmm. and it grows full grown real fast and people compl- say they complain about that to me, that didn't really bother me. It was more 
the last 20 minutes. They throw these twists at you that are like, what, what, what? And it's like the, that whole execution of ideas was really just, it was weird. Mm -hmm. It was almost too much in the last 20 to 30 minutes, and it threw the movie off for me. Um, I didn't hate it. I don't think it's great. Um, it looks good. It's a good-looking movie. Yeah. Um, but it's better than Resurrection, which is a turd on a stick. Yeah, it is um, better than Resurrection. But I bought it to for because it's only three bucks, and it completes my Alien collection. Um, so it's better than Resurrection. It's probably not better than one, two, or three. You know, it's no. or better than Prometheus. I'd probably put it fifth best. If I was to rank the Alien movies real quick, obviously Aliens is one, Alien is two. Mm -hmm. You know, people might argue with me on this, but I would maybe put Prometheus 3, Alien 3, 4, and yeah. Alien Covenant 5. Uh, Alien 3 and Prometheus kind of flip-flop. I like them for different reasons. Alien 3 is kind of cool because the whole prison, the alien. Yeah. But, but it's it's a really weak story where Prometheus might have a weak ending, but it's a strong story and amazing set pieces. Mm -hmm. So, you know, you kind of flip-flop those. But uh, Alien Covenant, hey, I'm not going to complain. Three bucks to watch it. You know, it's what the hell. Bad. And uh Cheaper than a movie my ticket. Alien. Yeah, it was only on clearance at half price because it it was a combo pack. It was missing the DVD. Okay. I don't care as long as I had the Blu-ray in it. You know, the digital code was still in there, but it didn't work. Ah so. oh, man, man, I'm, I'm gonna have to do some more shopping at Half Price Books. Dude, I'm telling you, man. You I, know, I feel like I go there every once in a while, and every time I go there, um, I find something cool, and I'm like, why don't I go here? It's more my often? favorite store, cheap. man. I can always find a yeah. treasure there. Almost every time I go, I find something, a movie, something rare, something cool. Um, it's it's definitely a store that's worth checking out. Last time I was there, I bought a cassette of John Denver's Greatest Hits. Why? Because, okay, it's whenever we did Boy Scout <laughs> trips, um, and we, we, dro we drove, like, well, my dad drove, like, 18 hours to Colorado. We played John Denver, and uh, it's like he would always make the joke, that John Denver is full of shit, you know, <laughs> from uh, Dumb and Dumber. <laughs> I, I get it, but still, a, a John Denver cassette, and a cassette at that. Yes, yeah. Well, I that's mean, all the Sequoia plays right now. I still have yet to get the CD player Wait, how old is that car? It's a 2001, man. It's a 17-year-old vehicle. And it has a cassette player in it It has still? a cassette player. Because yeah. at that time, it was kind of like whenever VCRs were ending and DVDs were being popular, you have the combo ones all the time, and this is it's got the combo player. But the CD player doesn't work. The CD player don't work. <laughs> it got jammed. I think. But yet the cassette player still works. That yeah, it's, it's still crazy. kicking, man. Cassette player is still kicking, <laughs> wow. dude. Cassette player. That's old. <laughs> yeah, man. Like older than Frank. It is older than Frank. <laughs> Frank, Frank, he farts dust. Yeah, so pretty you know, much. Yeah. You know? <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, that's it. We for download that. Uh, I can't talk for download this. Well, let's get into today's movie. Um, it's a. Um, Cult classic, I guess. Yeah, it is. Um, we're doing. We're talking Monty Python and the Holy Grail from 1975. Um, as I talked to the preview last week, this is a movie that I wasn't super familiar with. I knew I knew what Monty Python is. I had seen clips and the famous scenes, but I imagine I had some point had sat down and watched this. I just didn't retain it. Yeah. So I can't really say when my first time I really watched this was probably on TV years ago. Um, but it's not something that stayed with me. Comedy Central would frequently air this yeah. one, and I used to catch my dad watching it every so often, and all I would all ever remember is the Black Knight and the uh, fake horse galloping sound. <laughs> yeah, and, and which is, of course, a couple of the famous moments, and, mm -hmm. and we'll talk about that in a minute. There's actually a couple of scenes that I think are funnier than that scene, but oh, that's yeah. the scene that gets the famous moment. Absolutely. Um, yeah. Now... I'm very picky when it comes to comedy. Um, I like fart humor, dick humor. Yeah. Kevin Smith films. And this movie, I, and man, our buddies at the Thor Skin Podcast, Alex is going to probably trash me like this, but man, British humor, I don't fucking get, man. <laughs> it's it's like, what? The, the jokes drag on, and they do in this movie. And I went on, and I've been trying, I watched it without reading anything about it. Mm -hmm. Um so I'm going to count this as my first full experience. And it's not first full experience with Monty Python, because I've seen Flying Circus and I've seen things. But uh, I, I gave it a chance. But then I went back and read some critic things about this. And I agree with everything they say. The jokes sometimes drag on for 10 minutes. So you lose interest in the joke. And then the punchline's dropped and you're like... You miss it. It's that dry humor that yeah. you have to think about what happened. And like I'm like, I don't get it. Um, I feel like that happens in the beginning more. 
Um, I think yes. once, you, once you get past the beginning and everyone splits up and goes on their own journey, then it gets a whole lot funnier. But you kind of have to get through this almost... It was almost like listening to a second language for me whenever he's talking to the two people complaining about how he how King Arthur became king. Mm-hmm. He's like, I never voted for you. And then I'm like, they're talking, you know... English, English, so fast. Right. I'm like, what, what, what? <laughs> and, and before we get too far, in yeah. case people don't know, Monty Python is a famous comedy troupe from the 1970s, and they had a television show on called Monty Python's Flying Circus. And it was basically sketch comedy, like Saturday Night Live, short mm-hmm. skits and things like that. And they spin it off into a movie. Yes. And this movie is basically a spoof on King Arthur as they're hunting for the Holy Grail. And he's trying to put together the Knights of the Round Table. And just when he's about to give up, they get called by God to search for the Holy Grail. <laughs> yes. And um, it's very low budget. It's like only yeah. $400,000. But yet it made a lot of money at the box office. In 1975, yeah. it was the most successful British film ever released here. Yeah. And um, so it's there's no horses, as you mentioned, the coconut yeah, they sounds. Because they couldn't money. afford them. Yeah. So they use coconuts to make horse sounds. And they even th- that was funny. And they even make fun of them in the movie like you're using coconuts she's like no i'm not (laughs) i guess you are and they have this whole long spiel about why the coconuts yeah it's really how did you even get the coconuts (laughs) well i found them how did you find them and he's like and he's like I'm We're trying to ask tropical you. climate. Yeah. yeah. He's like, well, it, you must have been from a, a, spe- a swallow. He's like, a European swallow, an African swallow. <laughs> and, and you're right. And they talk fast. You're trying to pick up on it. And I think that's... And then if the joke starts dragging more than a few minutes, you lose track of it. Yeah. Uh, and, and, the, and, the, and it does start out well, that opening scene with King Arthur and the and the coconut comet, that part's funny. That yes. part doesn't drag on too much. And it, and it explains to you right at the beginning of the movie that there's no horses. This is what's going to happen. And the whole movie, they're trotting along like yes. they're riding horses, and it's ridiculously stupid, but it works for some reason. It's one of the most big... It's probably one of the most famous visual gags <laughs> in comedy history. It is, and that's one thing that you will always remember whenever someone says Monty Python. It's like someone just probably picks up two two uh you know pieces of wood and starts clinking them together right <laughs> <laughs> so and that's how the movie starts with this immediate visual sight gag yeah that's explained to you through birds and tropical climate hats and you're like what so it, it, it makes no bones about it what you're getting into right away yeah it's you know even in the credits the credits that are rolled in oh the opening like, credits and yeah then it's like everything shuts down and they're like sorry the people doing the credits have been sacked and then there's then the people that sacked the people that made the credits have been sacked <laughs> and then everyone has been replaced with llamas and they say, and they, they say something like and we had a new company design credits and it comes on with this like bright color 1970-ish and, and and let's be honest this is probably a movie you should probably be really high to watch oh man it would be free and hilarious <laughs> you know, if you were high to get parts of it and i think that's why it became a cult classic because i i imagine guys sitting around smoking their bowls and going man that monty python shit's fucking funny man <laughs> you know um <laughs> so uh so then the movie after they is well so uh so the famous scene happens pretty early on as he's oh, trying yeah. to search for his knights. He runs to a black knight who's like this, and you watch this badass fight between this other guy, and it kicks into like action movie mode for a few minutes. Yeah. It's actually a pretty well choreographed fight that John Gleese and the other actor actually did themselves because they mm-hmm. couldn't afford stuntmen. Yeah, and so they learn to use the swords and film it, and it's a pretty cool scene. And the black knight kills the green knight, and they walk over like, oh, okay, fight's over. So they try to pass through. He's like, you cannot pass. And he's like, but we must. And he goes. And so King Arthur's like, well, oh, fuck it, whatever, I'll fight you. So he fights him, and this is the famous scene. Yes, A cuts off one arm. Is it merely a flesh wound? He's like, a flesh wound? You're missing your arm. No, I'm not. <laughs> yes, you are. Well, have at me, you coward. And he's like hitting him with one arm, cuts off the other arm. And then he cuts off a leg, and he cuts off the other leg. And this guy will not stop fighting. And they, they dig a hole in the ground uh, so that... Uh, Gleese can can get fit in the ground. Well, and they used two different actors in that part. Yeah, because because uh, Gleese uh, filmed the Black Knight, and then they had a guy who literally had only one leg came in and did some of the hopping scenes because yes. they couldn't figure out a way to cover up his leg. That's right. That's right. And um 
And rumors for years were that they buried the, they put the hole in the ground for the guy with one leg. And John Gleese eventually, most recently, came out and said, "No, that's me in the dirt. You yeah, know, my legs in the dirt." And that's that's him in the dirt. And he's trying to get him as a corso, <laughs> or as a torso. It's it's funny whenever he has no arms and he's like trying to kick him, <laughs> yeah, and uh, he kicks him on the ground. Yeah, man. <laughs> <laughs> oh man, that's it, it's it starts off with with some good some strong humor yeah um and very iconic stuff i and, mean if, and, yeah. and that's where this movie works is those short funny scenes but there's a lot of dialogue style scenes that drag on and on and on it's just like and it, i don't know like i said i was reading about critics and they said the same thing that you have too long you have long 10 minute jokes that mm-hmm. take place take forever to develop and it loses the attention of the viewer and that's very much how i felt watching it like this is funny, but it's not funny at the same time. And I didn't hate this movie, but I didn't love it either. I think it's okay. I think it's very much a product of its time. You kind of have to grow up watching it. But we'll yeah. talk more about that in a little bit. Um, so then the movie goes on, and he eventually gets all of his knights together after God calls him. And did Which it kinda, is a famous cricket player. Right. Yeah. And they use like this, they use a rotoscoping to do like a fake animation. Mm-hmm. And then it branches off into like individual little adventures in very much Monty Python style where each knight has their own separate quest as they're trying to find the grail. Yes. And it's not really explained why. It just sort of happens. Yeah. Like all of a sudden you have up. individual adventures for each knight. Yeah. They, I, I could have sworn that there was a thing. Well, no, maybe maybe I was maybe I I read that they split up so that they could, you know, spread more ground. Right. But I I think maybe so, but it's real briefly explained. And briefly explained. You're you're right, and it starts off with uh, Sir Robin, I believe. Mm-hmm. I think it starts off with Sir Robin, and and just the song is just friggin' hilarious. <laughs> Brave Sir Robin, he'll face the task, even though he's gonna get gout and have his heart cut out <laughs> right. on his knees. And he's like, "Whoa, whoa, whoa, what?" And he's like, "Stop singing, stop singing." Yeah, and, and then they fall, then the singers follow him around the whole time, and he keeps telling them to shut up. Like he's like, "Stop, I hate this." You know? <laughs> and they even, and then they come to the three-headed man, who is of course uh, Gleese and uh, the, the, the two Terries, right? Gleese mm-hmm. and the two Terries, uh, and. Uh, they, uh, yeah, they, they, they and that's the thing. They argument. all play multiple parts of the yeah. movie. I think one of the actors plays twelve different parts. Yeah. Yes, and uh, they even have each. Yeah, each one. Yeah, some played twelve parts, and uh, but overall, everyone averaged about eight. Mm-hmm. That's just the average. And uh, they even have Gleese made a, a, a joke about it one time being interviewed, and he talked about how he was being you know driven on set by a driver, and they had used the driver <laughs> as an extra, and he's like. How many parts have you played? And he goes, 11. <laughs> and he's like, oh, wow. He's like, yeah, I'm really trying to hit 15. And he's like, you know, it's a good film when you have someone playing 15 parts. <laughs> and so, uh, you know, just like, you know, other parts of the film, they had family members come in. But, right. you know, it was, it's, it's funny how they, how they got it, you know, financed and used, which um, Pink Floyd helped finance this yeah, film. Led Zeppelin. Led yeah. Zeppelin. And uh, today, um, it would be about one point about 1.7 to 2 million dollars estimated is, right. is what the film costs so i mean you we've talked about you know budgets before that's barely enough to pay for advertising right. nowadays and, and they did a lot of the costumes they used stuff that they already had in the monty python archives from the tv show and they yeah. redid some of the stuff and and they they and they were they used they found some wool for cheap so they made the costumes out of wool and stuff like that yes. and painted on them and uh, a lot of the shields were just made of wood they had found, and things like that, and the swords. And and the castle probably the biggest prop. It's yeah. like it was a it was a big prop, and they even made a, a joke about it because they they went and they scouted all these castles, and then they were told they couldn't film in them. And it's funny because it's and people and they film it at different angles, but it's the same castle in every scene. Yes, but they use it multiple times for each guy's adventure with the different castles they went to. Yes, the the other one. The the one you see from afar is actually a model, which right. uh, Gleese's character actually makes a reference to. He's like, "It's just a model," and the author's <laughs> right. like, "Shut up." <laughs> <laughs> and then then there's the the funny scene. Was it uh, Lancelot who goes to the castle has all the girls? Oh, uh, or, Galahad goes. Yeah, Galahad. But Lancelot uh, res- rescues, rescues him, him, quote unquote. <laughs> and at first, you know, uh, uh, Sir Sir Galahad is just you're like, "Yo, don't touch me." And it's a just- very <laughs> We've done these older movies before that have this taste of the 70s, and this is very much a 70s free love yes. scene. And, it, and it's it's funny because if that came out now, there's no way it gets a PG. And there's nothing bad in the scene, but the dialogue's very PG-13, oh, yes. even though it's tongue-in-cheek. He's like, I saw I saw the, the grail from afar. And he's, she's, he's like, it was a light. And she's like, oh, my, it was a light. 
Oh, it was I for, I forget who's who it was. She names her, but we're gonna have to punish her. It's like, oh, how do you punish her? <laughs> we strap her down and then you'll spank her. <laughs> and they're like, right. and then you'll do whatever you want to her afterwards. And then you can spank me. And then another girl's like, yeah, and you can spank me. And then they're like, you can spank all of us, and all of us will be spanked. And then we can start with the oral sex. And then she's like, what? And that's when Lancelot busts in and is like, don't worry, sir, we've got you. <laughs> and they're like, we'll save you from these uh, these uh, sirens, these seductresses <laughs> and he's like no 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 let me face this peril alone he's like no this is too much peril he's like i don't know i'd like <laughs> a fair amount perilous. of peril <laughs> i'm supposed to face a large amount of peril every day <laughs> and they drag him out of there and he shouldn't have been such a prude when he got there otherwise he would have it would have been like an austin powers moment right and it's funny because like, as we're sitting here talking about this this movie's so much funnier to talk about when yes. i'm watching it like it's like I said, you don't really laugh because you're like, oh, that was supposed to be funny, but it takes so long to get to that point. It works better in short bursts. And one part I did really think was funny was the Knights of Knee part. Oh, yeah. I thought that was funnier than the Black Knight because they're like, we're the Knights of Knee. They freak out every time they the Knee. And they're so ridiculous. They're like, we want a shrubbery. And they're like, a shrubbery? It's, it's just a fucking bush. They yes. just want a nice plant. <laughs> And then they go through this massive quest to find this shrubbery. They find this old lady who they she, they scare by going, knee. And they come back and they're like, oh, we're no longer the Knights of Knee. And it's like, we're what? The, the, the Knights formerly known as Knee. Yeah. And then they uh, eventually get past them. And, and it turns out they're not really scary. They're just these ridiculous guys in the woods. Who yes. are trying to. And they're like, well, now, you know, you completed the quest for the Knights of Knee. Since we're a new knight group, you're going to have to have another challenge. And they're like, bring us another shrubbery. And they're like, no, we will not. He's like, okay, then cut down a tree with this herring. And he hands them a fish. <laughs> He's like, that's impossible. <laughs> yeah. <it's> a... <laughs> oh, man. And then they, uh, Sir Robin pulls up and... I guess they don't like the word. Uh, oh, with, with his singers following him. Yeah, yeah, with yeah. the sing with the singers following him, or it's like they don't like the word "is" or "it." It. it. Yeah. And so uh, they freak out and eventually let them go because they keep saying "it" all the time. <laughs> and then they get to the final challenge with the bridge and the old guy, and they have to answer these three questions, which are just like opinionated questions. Yes. Except for the last one, like, "What's your favorite color?" How's the thing know you're wrong or right? You know? Exactly. And, and he, and he eventually. <laughs> He says his own question wrong, so it shoots the old guy off the bridge, and they're able to crawl. So by the time Arthur gets to the grill at the end, he's only got, like, him and one other knight left. They've all died. Yes. Oh, we didn't even talk about the crazy bunny rabbit. Oh, yes, the bunny. <laughs> so they borrow this bunny from a lady, like a pet shop. They borrow it from the pet shop. And uh, I guess the lady was there on set, and they had to distract her while they basically lathered this bunny up in fake blood <laughs> right. for this scene. And she was not very happy. It's nuts, man. This bunny just, like, bites off uh, a head. Uh, he rips the, the dude's head yeah, off. It's man. like, what? The... And it's funny. I'm watching this, and I didn't... and I, I don't remember that scene. I was like, whoa, wait, what? The bunny just tore off the guy's fucking head. It's like... <laughs> Uh, yeah, man, that's she. They they had to they had to wash that bunny off pretty good. Afterwards. I'm sure. I, it's it's funny how what they had to do because of the budget, and this was one of the things borrowing the bunny. Um, and then the the uh, the famous uh, old man from scene 24, of course the 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 old uh, the announcer that got they got his head cut off. Oh yeah, yeah. And then you keep seeing British police in in the film. Now, the original draft. Um, it was supposed to start halfway in right. the in the medieval times, and then it was going to be in present time, and they were going to find the Grail, but it was going to be at a department store where you could buy it, and so <laughs> it, that was going to be the ongoing yeah, and, joke. And the whole police thing is kind of weird. It's yeah. like, and then at the end of the movie, they show up to stop the battle, and they arrest them, and you're like, it ends. The movie, yes. You're like, what? Uh, against the Frenchman, who has some of the best insults <laughs> in the in the movie. I fought in your general direction. Your mother was a hamster, and your father smelt of elderberry. <laughs> he's like, <laughs> yeah, and he, he calls them smelly Brits. And he's like, well, what are you? I am French. Don't you understand my accent? <laughs> my ridiculous accent. <laughs> and then um, another famous scene is where John Gleese plays the Enchanter. And yes. he swears that he didn't improvise because there's been kind of come a uh, a group thing over the years where they all say they improvise. But most comedies, 
things are ad lib. These guys had it, and he goes, "My name is," and he thinks about Tim. They call me Tim, and he's and it's just <laughs> such an odd name. And he was actually the camera angle doesn't show it, but behind him there's nothing. He's literally standing like if he had fallen, he could have died. And he said the wind was real strong. They stand on this rock and everything. And he said in between takes he'd have to not that there were a lot of takes because they were low budget, but he had to squat down so that the wind didn't blow him over. Oh my god, and everything. And he said that was the most dangerous scene he did. It's playing Tim the Enchanter. <laughs> Almost died while while playing the Tim the Enchanter, yeah. who liked sparking fireballs everywhere. <laughs> That's crazy. And um, I don't even remember why they were at the Enchanter. What there was a reason there. Yeah, they were looking for something. Yeah, at that they point. had. It was supposed to. The answer to the Holy Grail was supposed to be in this cave. Oh, that's where he, the bunny was, and that's yeah. where the bunny was. And he—they're like, "Can you help us find find this cave?" So they, he leads it. He leads them to it. And, and that's like, right. Wait. He's ducking behind the rock. And yeah. He's like, I'm not going over there. He's, he's like, like, he's like, and and Sir uh, King Arthur is like, "Are you serious? Go take care of the bunny." Yeah. Then he gets his head ripped off. And they're like, "Oh, it's just a bunny. We can all hit it." They'll go over there, and the bunny's ripping all their heads off. Oh yeah. Dude. And they run. There's like only three of them left by that point. <laughs> and then they use the holy hand grenade. Yes, which. uh is referenced in Ready Player One, and um, my my son actually noticed that. He's like, Dad, that's from Ready Player One. I go, yeah, that's where they got it from. Yes. And um, how was it used in this movie? So they they call, I guess they call for the Holy Hand Grenade, and two right. monks bring it over, and they, and they read from the scripture, Thou shalt pull the pin and count to three, not to four, <laughs> and not to five, but three three and then so he's like ah and so he pulls the cross off the top and he goes one two five and then <laughs> says and one of the other guys is like no three he goes oh yes three and he throws it over and of course it blows the right. bunny up <laughs> it's it's like it was more epic in and ready player one but of course that's a video game world right. so it's all epic um but uh but yeah it was really cool to see that and i had not noticed that before obviously because you know, whenever you know you're younger and your your dad's watching it, you're just kind of watching bits and pieces. Right. Especially whenever you don't really get the humor but, too much. Then you know, as far as a lot of the movies we've covered on the show, I this one to me maybe doesn't hold up as well as some other ones because you have to put yourself into the movie. Yeah, it's very much a product of the 1970s, and we've done older movies before that hold up well today. This does hold up, but. Like you'd have, you really have to put yourself in that mindset for it to hold up. I don't think it holds up as well as putting on like Planet of the Apes or Escape from New York because they're more sci-fi, fancy. This you kind of have to put yourself in that time, put yourself in the comedy mind, and say mm -hmm. this is supposed to be funny. This is a product of the '70s. It's definitely not 2000s comedy. No, you know, it's definitely a different type of comedy. It's it's very British. Yeah, very British. You know, but it's accessible too, and that's why it did well for American audiences. Yeah, and and they did a, you know, they they chose the medieval times because they wanted something that they could really play off of and go in a different direction if they needed to. Um, it's a loose storyline, you know. King Arthur he has Knights of the Round Table searching for the Holy Grail, and they could kind of twist the script however they wanted to um, with that structure. Right. So that's why they went with uh, the old time, like they they had the script like written out after like just a few days and mm -hmm. then uh the two terry's uh terry gilliam terry uh, jones. jones yeah they directed uh, the film which terry terry jones he can't even speak now right uh, he's he had a uh a frontal lobe cancer or, yeah and uh so well they're all getting up there in asia yeah. and terry gilliam's still making movies he went on to make a uh, brazil and uh the adventures barry munchausen barry munchausen he's made a lot of really famous uh kind of epic movies that yeah. you know went on to do and he he was the animator. In fact, he dies in the film, right? Uh, because uh, of, because of the yeah, there's little animated whatever. interludes in the film. Yeah, too. the monster of R. <laughs> yeah. Um, but uh, man, what was what, I lost my train of thought? Because there's, there's so much. It's like you lose the the train of thought in the film, like right. the, the point of the film, and, and then now I'm losing my train of thought talking about the film. But <laughs> um, yeah, so uh, the two Terrys, yeah, they they basically decided to scrap the whole thing and they had like only 10 percent of the film uh original original script is what they went off of and uh they kind of it kind of like you now it was cool having two directors but it seemed like there was a lot of conflict on set right. uh, because they were used to i guess the other guys were used to working with them and now they had to take orders from them right and it was it was kind of a rough movie it was to probably make. a growing thing you know yeah. you're used to doing a comedy trip together and you did a tv show and now all of a sudden you're having to 
work to, yeah, you know, you, you're changing the dynamic of yeah. things, I would imagine. And Terry Gilliam over the years has been known as a, not a actor's director. He's, you know, his movies that he's done, people would say he's very difficult to work with. Yeah. He's very hard. And, uh, and maybe that's where this where that started, you know, being a difficult director. This could, uh, and they thought, you know, who they thought that they could direct it better than uh, Ian. Uh, I, f- I forget, I forget which, uh, I-, I forget Ian's right. last name. Who directed their first film in ni- 1971, which is basically um, uh, their show, just right. kind of re it skit, out. Yeah, yeah. But and this one was a whole lot different. It was actually it was cinema. You know, right. they tried. He tried to incorporate seminal aspects to it and they didn't understand some of the things that he was doing but you know because he'd have you know shots down from low and trying to make these wide shots right. which i think he regrets some of the wider shots that he made um just because of the i guess he didn't like the vis- visual effect on some of the scenes but um you know it's it it was a good learning experience mm-hmm. for them and their movies got better with life of brian right um life of brian was pro- is probably better than this film yeah and 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 I was and it's funny because you know, I mean, like I said, I didn't hate this film, didn't love it. I found it in the middle of the road, um, but it's just not necessarily for me. I didn't grow up in that time and everything. And I, I like I said, I like kind of more simple humor. But this movie does make a lot of top ten lists. It's made a lot of top five comedies of all time. Yep. Life of Brian is usually above it by a couple of spots. Mm-hmm. Um, but this is a very loved film um, by a lot of people. They found this cult class. A lot of childhood favorites of people that grew up with it. I'm sure. Alex and the guys at Thorskin probably are thinking, man, these fucking Americans don't know what I'm talking about. That thing's a classic. <laughs> you know, and it is a, it classic. Is a classic. It's just not, like, I personally am not going to probably put it in my top, maybe even 50 of all time movies. I think it's classic. Yeah. But that's just because it's not something I'd probably go access on purpose, yeah, you know. That, that's like saying, you know, I don't enjoy Casablanca, but you know it's a classic, right. you know, film. I mean, yeah, this is like me. Like I've never yeah. watched The Godfather all the way through. I can't get into it. That's just me. I accept <laughs> that it's a classic film, but I've tried watching Godfather a few times. 20 minutes into it, I'm bored as fuck. I just can't get into it. Pull the trigger, walk away. Yeah. <laughs> so, you know. But Monty Python The Holy Grail is a fun movie. And, and I'm, I'm, I'm glad I watched it all the way through and added it to my library of films I've watched. I don't, and, um, and... It's it's worth checking out if you're really yeah. into comedy and sketch comedy. And guys, it, if you have an Amazon account, it's an add-on item right now for like four forty nine for the uh, extended uh, special edition uh, DVD. Not the Blu-ray, but the DVD. The Blu-ray is still like twenty bucks. Yeah, but you know, so it's it's worth checking out if you're if you're aspiring comedian. Monty Python is obviously something that you'd have to watch and learn oh, yeah. from. There's no doubt about that. Um, so check out Monty Python, the Holy Grail, and if and we hope you enjoyed listening to us talk about it too. I think. Any final thoughts on, or that was your final thoughts, the Amazon? Oh, that was that was my <laughs> final all, thoughts. It's like hit, that's like Amazon. go buy the fucking movie, go buy it. It's yeah. awesome. Put, pull it. I like. And we get nothing items. from Amazon. We don't even yeah. have Amazon links in our website. So. I just you know we just use it a lot. And, yeah. You know you you can take all those add on items, and you don't have to just add on an item to a regular order i thought that at first which is why i would order like mark would go on there and whenever you know sometimes we use each other's account and uh you know it's like he would see why'd you buy like paper towels or why'd you buy this it's like you go to the store and i'm like and i'm like no oh, well you know it's add on item for like three dollars something that's normally like five and i was like you know whatever but now i found out that you can just add all the add on items together so you can you can find like some you know DVDs maybe that right. you didn't have, and it's uh, the regular DVD, not the Blu-ray is like five dollars. You can add all those five dollar, four dollar DVDs yeah. up, and uh, as long as long as that equals twenty five bucks, it's prime shipped to your house. You get it in two days. All right. Good deal. So um, that's it on my Python and the Holy Grail. Well, we're not out of here yet. As always, we got things to talk about. We've it's been a really slow news week, um, but yeah. it always is. It's back to school and holiday. So let's talk some news real quick. In a minute, we're going to preview the fall movie season because there's a lot of movies coming out. Um, DC Universe announced they're launching September 15th, new streaming service. Um, I don't have the money right now. It's $75 for the year. You get three free months. That's not bad. It's $5 a month That's for 15 right. months. Um, Titans is going to debut in October on there. Uh, I'm kind of waiting because I'm surely they're going to have a free trial and I'm surely they're going to have a monthly have thing. To. Um, it, you know, I feel like I got to get this even though I'm broke as fuck right now. <laughs> I just feel like, man, it's DC. Are you going to check it out? I want to because uh, they're supposed to have all the uh, animated films yeah. on there, right? Yeah, the animated films, Batman yeah. the Animated Series, which is in remastered high definition, the old wow. Wonder Woman TV series. Um, 
comics you can read, all kinds of cool stuff. On it's it. there's a. I mean, that's that's really good. I mean, I know DC had a uh, like a, a program through Kindle, I believe, where you could basically watch all of their you know look at all of their comics online. And you know, if you scrapped that and then just did this, it, it's not that much more, and you're getting all these right. movies and shows for free. Or not for free, but for a little bit extra. I, and I know it feels like we don't need more streaming services and stuff, but there's just some things like I don't really watch Hulu that much, but my mm-hmm. wife does, so that's why I have Hulu. But I'm to the point where, like, this I might have to check out. It might be worth it, you know, and see what it's all about. Um, you know, they're making this Spawn movie with Todd McFarlane directing, which Jamie Foxx starring. I guess Jeremy Renner's in it, too. I we've talked before. I just I want it to be successful, but we'll see. Yeah. But they did announce that Greg Nicotero, who's very known, very famous and known for his uh, The Walking Dead, and that he's going to design the Spawn suit. Oh um, wow! I imagine that would be cool. Yeah. I mean, his Walking Dead stuff's great. Whether you love or hate the show, now nine seasons in, there's no argument that Greg Nicotero has brought that show to life in so many good ways. Mm-hmm. And uh, see him do the Spawn suit should be pretty cool. Yeah, I mean, I it's better than the C, probably than the CGI the C, that we yeah, got the, back in the way back. <laughs> it's funny, like it's so funny how you changed twenty years later. I really liked that Spawn movie in ninety seven. I watch it now, and I'm just like, God, this is really fucking terrible. Yes, the cape whenever he's in the ballroom or whatever. Yeah, it's just look freaking epic. One of the most epic capes <laughs> I've ever seen. But and now, now you realize, back, like, wow, like, this sucks. <laughs> yeah, it's not as good. <laughs> um, you know, we Tom Hardy. Let it be known that he's signed on for three Venom movies that's coming out in a couple weeks or in a couple about a month. Um, we're going to talk about that in our fall movie preview, but uh, I guess that's good. But it's not really, un- I don't know why it's news. Um, I guess that's that's the kind of slow news week it's been. But yeah. I guess all these actors now that are signed on, but all I know is if we don't get Spider Man vs. Venom in this movie, we better get it in part two. Oh, absolutely. I would hope. Hopefully um, they tease it a little bit and they use Tom Holland again. Did you watch the Red Band trailer for Predator? That I, came out. I saw. I caught some of it. Man, it looks cool, dude. Like, there's the you predator has the predator. dogs, yeah, and stuff that he uses. And man, the more and more, I'm still not sure about the cast of uh, human characters. They look kind of like, like that one dude, that that black dude that's a comedian. Like, he's funny, but I see him in the trailer and he's just like out of place. It's weird. Yeah, it's weird. And I'm just him. wondering how the dynamic will come together of the group. Um, but the movie looks cool. I mean, I'm all for it. Shane Black's a cool director. Yeah. He's made some cool stuff. So um, we'll see how this comes at, comes out in a couple of weeks. And uh, um, we may or might not be talking one of the Predator films on the show that week. <laughs> um, that's a little early preview. Yes. And lastly, some more Star Wars Episode Nine casting. Dominic Monaghan, Mon- Monaghan, I think that's how you say it, from mm-hmm. Lord of the Rings. And Matt Smith have been added to the cast. A couple of very good actors. Let's just hope that Matt Smith is used better in Star Wars than he was in Terminator Genesis. Yeah. Um, but this is rounding out to be a really nice cast, as always. And and I, I'm really... Last Jedi haters, be damned. I love the movie, and I can't wait to see how J.J. Abrams brings it all together. Um, this cast is looking remarkable. Um, the I think so far, Disney has done a remarkable job with their casting and Lucasfilm. Um, people say they don't like the new characters, which I don't see how. I think John Boyega and Daisy Ridley and... and Oscar Isaac have all done such a great job bringing yeah. new characters to life and bringing Star Wars to a new generation. I, I think and I think that's the big picture here, bringing Star Wars to a new generation yeah. and not letting it be, um, you know, a uh, an, an object of the 80s, yeah. you know. All these whiny bitches that are like, oh, they ruined my childhood. No, they didn't. You're grown up. They didn't mm-hmm. ruin your childhood. And Disney's not even ruining it. Lucasfilm is in control. The films, man, keep them coming. Yeah, I I can't wait to watch Solo again in a couple weeks when it hits Blu-ray. It's oh, like yeah. I'm so excited to watch it again. Um, so more Star Wars and principal photography just started a few weeks ago. But you know, I imagine I imagine we're not going to get the first trailer until April at Star Wars Celebration, Probably. which would make sense when it come out next December. So um, that's really all the news. Like I said, very slow news week. So let's talk some fall movies that are coming out. And it all, to me, starts here in a couple weeks with The Predator, which we just talked about. Yes, um, I think that's going to be. I hope it's really good. It's got to be the kickoff to to the fall, so it's it has to be good. I mean, I know it didn't. You know, we talked I think earlier in the year about how it, it didn't make the uh, summer. Yeah, summer they pushed list. it back a little bit. Yeah, but you know, the trailer has me very optimistic. I, I thought this was, you know, going to be, you know, I guess the a failed attempt to revive, you know, a, a good, you know, a good franchise, yeah. but needed a kick another kickstart. And so, yeah, I thought this was going to be a failed kickstart pretty much um 
but the trailer it has me interested i i definitely would like to probably take jake to go see it so jake could have a, a good introduction to the to the predator it's not rated R, right? Is it's it? going to be rated R. Ah, oh, darn and it. Watch the Red Band trailer. There's bodies getting ripped apart. Okay, I need to, yeah, I need to watch that Yeah, you probably shouldn't watch it. <laughs> okay, never mind. Yeah. Yeah, PG-13 I can get away with, but yeah, rated R. <sighs> yeah. That's really the big one for September as far as movies we cover. Then October, we just talked about Venom comes out. Another movie that you got to be optimistic about. It looks really cool. The trailer's really cool, but... How will it all come together and be executed? I think uh, automatically, I believe he's got to be better than Eric from that set. Oh yeah, show, I'm not worried obviously. about Tom Hardy at all. It's yeah. just the story and the film and tying it all together is Carnage in it? Is he not? Who's Woody Harrelson playing? How's that all going to come together? Does Tom Holland cameo in it? Because it's funny the director all of a sudden said, "Oh, I'm not saying whether Spider Man's in it or not," which to me tells me Holland must have a cameo in it, even if it's post credits at the end of the movie. It's kind of. I just find it very difficult to make a Venom movie without mentioning Spider-Man or Havoc, because the characters are as interconnected as the Joker and Batman, or Lex Luthor and Superman, yeah, or Magneto and the X-Men. It just feels like you have to have Spider-Man connected to this movie in some way. And it's like if you if if you've read the comics, you know that Venom comes to Earth because uh, the, he piggybacks on. Uh, J. Jonah Jameson's son, who's an astronaut, he's right. coming back down from the moon, and the symbiote is hitching a ride on on the uh, on the shuttle, and uh, whenever it crashes, it's like the well the the rhino and the shocker are trying to rob the um, the shuttle whenever it does crash. So the, I mean, I can see why they if they are not in it, that's right. that's not a big deal. But it'd be cool to see Jonah Jameson, maybe Jameson's son, and then the symbiote and then have that tie back into Spider-Man yeah. somehow. Um, also in October from the director of La La Land, his follow-up, you know, which is a award winning movie is first man with Ryan Gosling. Um, I saw this trailer in the theaters, strangely a couple weeks ago with something I saw and uh, it looks kind of weird. Like it's been a while since we've had a NASA movie telling the story of Neil Armstrong, but this movie looks like it's definitely going for more hardcore, heavy adult drama. Um, okay. Than it is like the Apollo 13 was more like lift me up. You know, drama. This is more like what these men struggled to deal with the space program and everything. And a reason I talk about it is because it does kind of relate to things we talk about on the show. It's kind of science fiction. It's real sci-fi. Yeah, and that's you know? that's probably better. I mean, I haven't seen this trailer, but you know, if it's a uh, a modern day version of Apollo 13, I'm I'm all for it. You know, we we need another space movie other than just having inter uh, an interstellar or, right. or The Martian. Yeah, and I know you're a fan. I'm not a huge fan, but in October, Halloween comes out. I've never been a fan of the Halloween movies. It's just not really... I, I just don't... I just didn't care for Mike Myers. Yeah. I always thought he was kind of a stupid slasher guy. I was more of a Nightmare on Elm Street, Friday the 13th guy. So this is another one of those legacy sequels. It's a sequel to the original. It takes place, you know, 30, 40 years later. Um, the trailer did nothing for me. I'm just like... But I know people are excited. Yeah, I, I, I definitely want to see it. And, you know, Jamie Lee Curtis, it's good to see her back on the back on the screen. Um, I, I like her as an actress. Uh, I mean, I favorite performance obviously was true lies. Um, but one of the reasons I really like Halloween is because I wasn't supposed to watch it. And then when my <laughs> parents weren't, were gone, you know, we had the VHS and so I popped it in and I watched, uh, I watched Halloween and I was like, whoa, it was really my introduction to horror movies really as was Halloween as was a lot of people john carpenter's halloween yeah. that was uh i mean that started a revelation of, of horror films so this is like back when you were duck and running call yeah. back and old stuff yeah. so you were duck and running we'll probably around be, watching horror movies probably before duck and run <laughs> well, probably a little that. before yeah i would hope so <laughs> yeah you duck and run at this age no no i didn't start that early <laughs> oh. <laughs> so yeah hopefully you know, people dig it hopefully they like it and it's good for them isn't you know? isn't creed supposed to come out after that we're getting to creed oh, okay okay i got on the list here man all right slow down frank I w yeah uh, i know right <laughs> early november we'll talk about this briefly but i want to give it a mention because i am looking forward to bohemian rhapsody i think it looks fantastic oh hell yeah the story of queen it's not necessarily a movie that we would remember talk about on rebel radio but man bohemian rhapsody looks really fucking good it does great trailer so far and that comes out november 2nd then a couple weeks after that is creed 2 it's coming out um well we have the girl in the spider's web which is girl in the dragon tattoo series i know yes. a lot of people are looking forward to that but creed 2 it comes out november 21st that's okay that's um, right, late which november. is right after fantastic beast 2 which we talked about fantastic beast a bit on our comic-con yeah, show a little bit 
I don't know. I just think Harry Potter is getting a little beaten to the ground. Just the trailer to me just wasn't that great. I wasn't a huge fan of the first Fantastic Beasts. I thought it was okay. I think it has Dumbledore in it. Yeah, and this one that's... brings Dumbledore in. Yeah. The first Fantastic Beasts was really good until like the end. It just to me, the last 20 minutes of that movie just sort of fell down. It was okay. But I know there's a lot of big Harry Potter fans out there looking forward to this. So that comes out. But then right after that is Creed 2. And you know, at first. When I first heard the idea of Creed 2 and he's fighting Drago's son, I was like, yeah, I don't know, man. It seems kind of like pushing it. But then I saw the trailer and you see Drago's name on the on the um, the the robe, and you're like, fuck yeah, yeah, dude. You know? And it's like he just looks like a friggin' machine from the back. You just you just get that feeling that this guy's a machine like his dad. Yeah. And you know, Rocky having doubt in uh, in in Creed and and uh, not well, not Creed. He's technically legally not Creed. Right, but uh, Jordan uh, Michael B. Jordan's he character. earns the name in Creed. Yeah. Anybody hasn't seen it. He didn't want to be known as Creed, so he was going by Adonis Johnson because yeah. he wanted to make a name for himself. But by the end of the movie, he fully earned being a Creed. Mm -hmm. But uh, yeah, he you know it's it's definitely going to be uh, there's going to be a lot of elements in that film that I think are are going to play out really well, and it looks like it might it might definitely be better than the first Creed and one of the best Rocky films. <laughs> Slow down there, though. Ryan, it's Ryan Coogler's not back to direct, and that's the one thing that scares uh, me. He is, he is executive producer, but it, it, Ryan, excuse me, Ryan Coogler, after doing Creed and Black Panther, it's going to be very difficult to top what he did because I think Creed works so well because of Coogler, mm -hmm. and be, and that's why Black Panther so works so well is because Coogler is really good at bringing out the best in the individual characters. So that, and that's what I loved about Black Panther is it wasn't just a superhero movie. You also really liked each character you introduced that's to. That's true. Uh, so I'm hoping that it's as good as Creed 1. We'll see. Um, next, uh, we have Ralph Breaks the Internet. Oh, yeah. Ra Wreck-It Ralph 2. Um, this is, I mean, we've been waiting for a, a Wreck-It Ralph sequel, I think, for a while. Maybe not as, as bad as we were waiting for a Mr. Incredible uh, or an Incredibles movie. Uh, sequel but you know we were i think a lot of people really liked wreck it ralph you know and uh you know the uh the ending of that film it, it left it open to where you know maybe we could re-enter that universe and and we finally get to yeah it's, it's gonna be fun it looks like a lot of fun kids and, are gonna love it yeah it's hard to go wrong with disney i've been looking forward to this wreck it ralph i've said before one of my favorite disney movies the last several years so i'm all over the sequel and um it comes out the same weekend as creed too so might have to see one one week, one the next, yeah. but, but it's coming out. And then lastly, for our fall preview, we have Aquaman coming out December 14th. And and I know they said there was an early press screening or early test screening, and people said it was good but not great. But I don't take much from those because it's only September, so people don't realize how much goes in the movie. That's four more months they have to re-edit the movie, do effect shots. Um, that's a long way. They're, they said the same thing about Rogue One. Early test screenings weren't good, and Rogue One turned out fantastic. So I don't take much from that. It doesn't actually mean anything. But I'll take good, not great, too, also yeah. for an Aquaman movie. It's like, if you're if we're talking about, you know, that translating into ratings, you know, if if, if great is like A, A+, plus, and this is more like B-plus material, then that's not bad. Yeah. That, that's, it's like, you know, why why do we have to kind of downplay it? You know, maybe that's more of the the bad mojo that DC is getting for right. whatever reason. I think that's, I think this is good news for DC films. I'm, I'm excited. This is going to yeah. probably be a, uh, maybe not as good as wonder woman, but right up. There. I think it'll be good. Yeah. So, um, that's what's coming out this fall and, uh, a quick, but efficient fall movie. Preview. Yeah, I think so. Yeah, we got it in um, there. So what are we going to talk about next week, Matt? We're going to talk about blade. You better wake up. The world you live in is just a sugar-coated top one. There is another world beneath it. The real world. For thousands of years, they have existed among us. You keep your eyes open. They're everywhere. Chances are you've seen them yourself and didn't know it. A secret nation. Our livelihood depends on our ability to blend in with a lust for power. We should be ruling the humans. These people are our food. They've got their claws into everything. Politics, finance, real estate. There's a war going on out there. He makes the weapons. I use them. Now, one will lead them to conquer mankind. Tonight, the age of man comes to an end. We're gonna be gods. And one will try to stop him dead. 
There are worse things out tonight than vampires. Like what? Like me. Half human. Blade's mother was attacked by a vampire while she was pregnant. Half immortal. You got the best of both worlds. All our strengths. None of our weaknesses. He is their greatest fear. And our only hope. It's open season on all vampires. Snipes, Stephen Dorff. You're one of them, aren't you? No, I'm something else. Blade. Wesley Snipes' Blade, which just celebrated its 20th anniversary on August 21st from hitting theaters. And um, you know it's it's a cool flick. It is. You know it's it's pre Marvel Studios era, but a well done movie. Um, not great, but a, a really well done movie. Oh yeah. Um, everyone talked about Black Panther being the first black superhero, but people forgot about Blade. Hell yeah. But man, all props to Wesley Snipe, even though he invaded taxes and did some wrong. Yeah. <laughs> he still made a cool movie, and we are also going to have author Ashley Niemer on the show with us, talking her new book, and she's into vampires, so. We were like, well, let's do a vampire movie. And I, I suggest to her, let's do Blade. And she's like, yeah, that's cool, you know. So she was down with it. So she's going to be on the show with us talking Blade. And we're going to talk about her and her new book that we have coming out. and Or we have come out. She has coming <laughs> she has out. She has coming out. Um, but I remember seeing Blade in theaters and uh, and thought it was a really cool flick. And uh, I haven't watched it in a long time. So yeah, kinda, I it should it be cool either. to watch again. I remember Stephen Dorff being a pretty badass in it, too. Mm -hmm. uh, I remember really great sword fights in it because I, yeah. I always like movies with good sword fights. So uh, so Blade should be a fun one to talk about next week. And uh, we haven't, we, we always talk a lot of comic book stuff on Rebel Radio podcasts. And, uh, and uh, you know, so we, we try to cover the comic book movies as much as we try to cover Monty Python and the Holy Grail. Yes. So let's come back around with a comic book movie and do Blade, uh, the Vampire Hunter. You know, <laughs> why didn't they call the movie Blade the Vampire Hunter? They just called it Blade. I guess. But then they maybe, had to, they should have called it Blade the Vampire Hunter. It would have been cool. Well, like, kind of like Buffy the Vampire you know, Hunter? Yeah. Oh, well, Slayer? I guess. It's, like, yeah, maybe that's why they, you know, it might be why they didn't do it Maybe. Back then. Like, so oh, it's going to sound Buffy like Buffy. Was on TV, you know? <laughs> yeah. We'll have to find out when we do a research. So next week, tune in the Rebel Radio Podcast. And check out Blade with author Ashley Niemer on the show. Um, but that's all we've got today. Make sure you go to the RebelRadioPodcast.com and check out all our episodes. Uh, Comics with Arnold is on there on our YouTube channel. Uh, probably a new one this week. Is Arnold working on one? You yeah, talked to him lately? I, I think he's working on one. Okay, that sounds good, man. We don't want... You know, I, I don't want to make Arnold mad anymore. I don't want nasty voicemails from like yeah. I got that one time. It was yeah, rough. I, I thought Arnold was going to like rah, bust uh. through the wall and, and kick my ass. Um <laughs> But go on the RebelRadioPodcast.com, check out all the stuff. Um, I'm working on more content for the RebelRadioPodcast.com because we don't want you to just go there just to check out a new episode. I'm hoping it's something you go out and check out two or three times a week and, and maybe stop and buy a T-shirt, donate some money on our PayPal. Though There's links on there for Entertainment Earth if you want to buy some of that new Funko cereal. They oh, have yeah. an exclusive Batman. Hit those links, and we get a little profit from the show. It helps us out on those Entertainment Earth links. Uh, and uh, I'll, I'll stop selling stuff to you because we just appreciate you listening. <laughs> yes, thank we you. really do. But that stuff's there if you want to support the show more. And um, but as always, thank you for listening to Rebel Radio Podcast. Those listening on Ironic Radio, thank you too. And um, until next week when we talk Blade, have a good week, everybody. And as always, this is Mark. This is Matt. And just go there and do, do it. it. Hey, headbangers! This is Rudy Sarso, and you're listening to the Rebel Radio. Podcast. This is Walter Simons. You're listening to the Rebel Radio Podcast. This is Booker T, Hall of Famer, and you're listening to Rubber Radio. Now, can you dig that, sucker?